All right, so let me tell you a little bit about myself, how I became an economist. Um, I actually went to the University of South Florida with the pre-med hat on, all right? I, I thought I was gonna be a doctor and so did 50% of my incoming class. <laughs> they thought that they were all gonna be doctors. Uh, it turns out about 140,000 students across the nation each year want to be a doctor. That's not what happens though, right? <laughs> uh, what happened to me is I went to this AMSA meeting, which is the American Medical Student Association meeting. I was taking my biology classes, I was taking my chemistry classes, getting all those, those pre-meds set up. It's gonna be a bio major. And uh, to this day, I can't tell you what um, this young doctor said or did. All I could remember was her walking on the stage and looking like she just got hit by a bus. She looked like she was so unhappy uh, and then like, this was just one more thing she was doing that day. I left there and, and I ran to my advisor and I'm like, all right, this, this pre-med thing may not pan out. So it wasn't an organic cam or anything that, that blocked me. It was kind of this lifestyle choice. But to give you an idea of how competitive the environment uh, pre-med is, uh, only about 17% of pre-med students actually become doctors. Right, so that 140,000 that I told you about, about half of them actually sit for the MCAT. And half of those actually make scores high enough to apply to medical school, <laughs> All right? And about half of those, uh, they, they get in on their first try and then another 6,000 get in after that. So that, that works out to 16.7% of that 140,000. It's a, it's a competitive field. Uh, it, it's, it's very difficult to get through. So the people who kind of make it through, not only can they persevere, not only are they intelligent, but they have something in them that's like this fire in their belly to, to make it through. And that fire in the belly is gonna be important when I talk about some of these other graduate programs. So, so how did I end up in the situation I'm at? Uh, I left biology like the day after <laughs> I, I went to that meeting and I ran to math. Math was my safety blanket. Uh, I knew I could go math and do well. Uh, so I, I took the calculus sequence, I took DPQ, I took probability statistics, abstract algebra, all these things. And while this is going on, I'm thinking I'm going to be a math major and I'll just figure it out on the back end. Um, I was participating in different school events. And one of the things that they had there was um, this orientation program. So I, I got into summer orientation and I became one of those uh, student leaders, if you will, right? It, it was a nice thing to do. It paid for my summer. I could cover my summer classes, got a place to stay. Uh, I did lots of odd jobs when I was an undergraduate student. Uh, one of the things I did was uh, tutor folks in college and in high school in their math classes. Uh, I actually taught salsa dancing at nightclubs in the evening. Uh, it was a nice way to make a, a side hustle there. And uh, I did taxes for folks in my resident dorm. <laughs> they didn't really have all that much money. So it was just doing the EZ over and over again. <laughs> but uh, it was a nice way of making extra cash. So I end up doing this summer orientation. I'm going through and uh, I'm showing students how they register for classes, how they get their gen eds in. And I run into... Uh, this instructor named Sue Barlett. And she was the principal's instructor for economics at the University of South Florida. Uh, she doesn't have a PhD, she's an MA, but she's a, a pro at what she does in teaching principals. And she convinced me to fill my social science requirement by taking this econ thing. And I was like, yeah, I guess I gotta do that, right? I, I've knocked out the math, I've knocked out the science. Let me, let me at least get my social science done through there. And for me, that's when the magic happened, especially coming first from math and then into econ. That's when I got the two things that I love put together, the human behavior plus math, all right? So this, if you're a people watcher, if you like to see how people uh, interact, if you like to see how people make decisions, econ has kind of a, a calling to you. And then when you throw in math with it, there is this logic that goes along with the studying of people. So economics married those two things together for me. Uh, and and it's, it's one of those things that, that for me, it seemed, it seemed to make sense. It seemed logical. It seemed like common sense. And you'll hear that a lot from 
econ majors. What you won't hear from econ majors is a quote that I have heard directly. Uh, that is so hard, much harder than what I'm doing. And in this case, it was an engineering major. <laughs> uh, economics has a, a special place in that it allows you to think logically about human behavior and it lets you see the world in systems rather than just a um, chaos random reaction that's going on in front of you. And by seeing the world in systems, it lets you see where the world is going. And that to me is it's, it's magic, right? We get to learn the system and then we can apply the system in all different types of places. So just to give you an idea about this, whenever you study slopes, you're really studying marginal costs. You're really studying marginal benefit. Whenever you're taking your parabola and finding its maximum and minimum, you're really studying maximizing profits. You're really studying maximizing utility. It was just marrying those two things together for you. You could see an actual application of the math that you said, I'm never going to use, right? <laughs> it is right there and you are using it. So I was hooked. I was hooked at that point. Uh, I ended up staying at South Florida to get an MA degree. They had a, a diversity a scholarship at that time. And I had taken some of my master's classes as an undergraduate towards the tail end. And so they allowed me to bring in those hours, uh, continue going through the master's program. I was able to finish it in one year. Now, I wasn't ready for the PhD at that point. Uh, I, I took that master's in econ. I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to do something with it. Let's see what I can do with it. Uh, I ended up working for the Center for Urban Transportation Research. And what I studied was uh, bus accidents. And so next time you stop behind a, a public uh, um, bus that's coming through, right, you're going to notice that behind it, it almost looks like a Christmas tree in the back. It's got like all these decelerization lights on it. It has red and yellow lights popping up and all this stuff. That's my fault. <laughs> uh, I was part of a study that looked to see how do we get people to stop rear-ending those buses? How do we get them to, to not do that? Uh, one thought was, oh, we just need to train our, our drivers better. It turned out that older drivers were the ones that were getting rear-ended more often. Uh, and then another thought was, no, we need to find a better way to, uh, to tell people, yo, there's a bus in front of you, <laughs> right? Uh, it turned out it was that. It was just making this capital improvement of uh, putting extra lights on the back of a bus and that decreased the number of uh, bus accidents. So I worked for Cutter for a while. But to be honest, uh, studying bus accidents all day, every day for uh, two years, it, it wore on me and I wanted to do something more. So I, uh, I kind of let fate decide. I applied to a couple of law schools and a couple of PhD schools. Um, and, and I took the LSAT, I took the GRE, uh, I sent the, the items out and I ended up choosing to go to the University of Virginia Economics. Now, I'll tell you why I did that. Uh, when you apply to grad school, they, they tell you to uh, kind of apply to a bunch of schools in the top 50. Um, and I'll get into why that's important a little bit later, but you want to apply into schools in the top 50. And then from there, you want to go to the school that will support you the most. And what I mean by that is that will actually pay for your education. Uh, your PhD if you're, if you're playing the game right, should be paid for, and you're going to work it off usually as a TA or an RA, but it's going to be paid for for you. You don't want to be taking out a loan to do a PhD. Master's programs are different, but to do a PhD, that's not something that you want to be taking out a loan to do. Um, I got accepted into Maryland and into Virginia. Uh, Maryland accepted me without money. Virginia accepted me with money, and they were one slot apart in that top 50 uh, listing. So for me, it was a, an easy decision from there. And I packed things up and I went up to Charlottesville, Virginia. Several years later, I ended up here at the University of Louisville as my first gig and I, and I haven't left since. 